good morning in today's class we'll be seeing an example for design of a single reinforced beam problem statement design a simply supported beam for the following data flare span 4.77 meters wall thickness 230 mm live load 10 kN per meter concrete grade m30 steel grade fe415 nominal cover m30 let's look into the design the actual design steps involved geometry load calculation and analysis check for adequacy calculation of area of steel check for shear check for deflection and finally the drawing so let's start the solution part step one geometry in this step we are going to find out the effective span uh, effective cover effective depth overall depth as well as the width of the beam so now let's start so the effective span uh, is the sum of clear span plus effective depth or the center to center of support whichever is less so this is taken from class 22.2 a of the code effective span uh, in this case we don't have the effective depth so we will start with center to center of the support so the effective span is given as uh, the clear span plus of the support on either side so effective span equal to 4.77 plus uh, 0.23 by 2 plus 0.23 upon 2 which is equal to 5 meters depth of the beam uh, so we are going to use the equation from class 23.2.1.a uh, span by d ratio equal to 20 but since we need to achieve a section which is safe in uh, strength as well as deflection so we will take the span by d ratio as 13 uh, any value which is ranging between 12 to 15 so i am just taking 13 in this case and let's check so whether the section is safe under deflection or not so assuming span by d is 13 effective depth required is 384 above effective cover is the sum of nominal cover plus stirrup thickness plus main bar upon 2 so we are assuming 8 mm thick rod as stirrups and 20 mm bars as main bars as the initial assumption so let us calculate the effective cover so effective cover d dash is given as 13 which is the nominal cover plus 8 mm which is the stirrup thickness and 20 mm is the main bar thickness so 20 upon 2 so which results in 48 mm overall depth is the sum of effective depth plus Uh, effective cover so overall depth d capital d is given as 384 plus 48 mm which is 432 mm so we are going to round up this number 432 to a higher uh, round up value either divisible by 50 or 100 so in this case we are taking overall depth as 450 mm so the overall depth we are assuming it as 450 mm and we are going to calculate the revised effective depth uh, from the effective cover and overall depth which comes to 402 mm and width of the beam normally we take width of the beam as the thickness of the wall so here in this case we are just assuming slightly greater than that so we are taking width of the beam as 250 mm so this is the end of first step so where we have calculated the effective length which is 5 meters and overall depth is 450 mm effective depth is 402 mm and uh, assumed width is 250 mm step 2 load calculation and analysis um, so in this case what we are going to do is like we are going to find out the weight of the beam we have been given the load of on the beam so sum them up find out the moments and shear force so self weight of the beam is calculated as cross sectional area into unit weight of concrete so 0.25 into 0.45 into 25 which comes to 2.813 kN per meter live load as given in the problem we are taking it as 10 kN per meter total load on the beam is the sum of dead load and live load which is 12.813 kN per meter now the problem has come down to a simple uh, analytical problem a simply supported beam of span 5 meters 
uh, supporting a load of 12.813 km per meter so this problem can be analyzed with with simple equations so we know the maximum bending moment of a simply supported beam with the udl is wl square upon 8 and um, shear force for a simply supported beam with the udl as wl by 2 so we'll use those two equations to find out the maximum bending moment so let's start maximum bending moment is given by wl square upon 8 so w we know 12.813 km per meter and the effective span is 5 meters so substituting them we get the maximum moment as 40.05 km per meter km meter and now we are uh, using limit state method so we'll be applying a partial load factor of 1.5 to convert the maximum moment into ultimate moment so the ultimate moment is 1.5 times maximum moment which is equal to 61 km meter calculation of maximum shear force so shear force is given by wl upon 2 so which comes out to 32.03 kN and ultimate shear force is again obtained by multiplying 1.5 which is the partial load factor to the maximum shear force obtained so we get the ultimate shear force as 49 kN so now we have got a moment 61 kN meter for which we will be designing the longitudinal reinforcement and it will be arranged at the bottom and we have the shear force so which uh, will help us in finding out the shear reinforcement step 3 check for accuracy moment of resistance um, is calculated from the equation given in class g 1.1 c uh, which is uh, equal to 0.36 xu max upon d Into one minus point four two into x u max upon d into b d square f c q. So x u max upon d is a proportion based on the grade of steel, which has been given in class thirty eight point one notes. So x u max upon d equal to point eight for uh, four and five grade steel. So let us substitute the values of x u max upon d, b d and f c q um, to find out the moment of resistance. So substituting those values, we get a uh, moment of resistance M U comma L as one sixty seven point two one six kilonewton meter. So we have got the actual moment from analysis, which is sixty one kilonewton meter, and we have got the moment of resistance, which is one sixty seven point two one six kilonewton meter. So M U is less than M U comma L. So the section is re under reinforced, so we'll end up in a singly reinforced section. so for uh, the moment 61 kN meter we are going to find out the area of steel required and we will provide them at the bottom of the beam okay so let's start with the calculation of area of steel that is step 4 so area of steel is calculated from the equation given in g 1.1b uh, mu equal to 0.87 fy ast into d into 1 minus ast fy upon FCKBT. So AST is the unknown. We will end up in a quadratic equation, and uh, resolving it, we will get uh, two roots. The least, the least one will be the AST required. So substituting MU as sixty-one kilonewton meter, and the FI is four and five. D is four zero two mm. The FI is four and five. B is two fifty mm, and the FCK is thirty. So we get AST is 448 mm square. Now, once we have found out this AST, we have to find out AST minimum because the court court tells that AST minimum um, should be governed if AST is less than AST minimum. So we are finding out AST minimum from class 26.5.1.1 A, uh, which is given as AST minimum upon BD equal to 0.85 upon FY. So substituting the values of B, D, and the FY, we get the AST minimum as two two hundred and six mm square. So AST is greater than the AST minimum. So AST will be used for arrangement of steel. So let's calculate the diameter of bar and number of bars required. So since we have assumed twenty mm bars to be used initially, so the number of bars is calculated from uh, by using area of steel calculated upon Area of one bar. So number of twenty dia bars required is four hundred and forty-eight upon three hundred and four three hundred and fourteen 
which is equal to 1.4 so rounding up we get two numbers so we'll be providing two number of 20 mm as main bars throughout the bottom of the beam as main reinforcement now <coughs> we'll calculate the area of steel and percentage of steel which is needed for calculation of uh, shear strength so area of steel provided uh, is number of bars into area of uh, bar so which is equal to 2 into 314 which is 628 mm square percentage of steel provided is 100 as upon bd so substituting them back so we get pt as 0.625% now top bars since we have to provide the minimum two bars at the top so ast minimum will be provided at the top so we have calculated ast minimum which is 206 mm square so let us assuming let us take 16 mm bars to be used at the top so let us find out the number of 16 mm bars required so which is equal to 206 upon 201 which is 1.02 but since we have to provide minimum we will be having two number of bars at the top so provide 216 mm at top bars as top bars throughout the beam step 5 check for shear now in this one what we are going to do is like we are going to find out the actual shear stress then find out the design shear strength of the concrete okay so the actual shear stress tau v is given by total shear force the ultimate shear force upon uh, the cross sectional area so this shear stress can exceed uh, the design shear strength of concrete or it may not exceed okay so in case if it is exceeding then we are going to find out the balance force and arrange shear reinforcement for the uh, balance shear force else we are going to arrange minimum shear reinforcement now the actual shear stress tau v is given by total uh, ultimate shear force upon cross sectional area which is 0.488 newton per mm square the shear strength the design shear strength of concrete tau c is obtained from table 19 uh, depending upon the grade of concrete and the percentage of steel provided so since pt is 0.625 m m30 grade concrete so we obtain tau c as 0.545 newton per mm square now in this case tau v which is 0.488 newton per mm square is less than tau c so the actual shear stress is less than the design shear stress so uh, the minimum shear reinforcement has to be provided as per clause 26.5.1.6 so which is given as asv upon bsv greater than or equal to 0.4 upon 0.875 fi asv represents the area of uh, steel in vertical that is shear reinforcement into number of legs so two leg means two into cross section of each leg and b is the width of the beam sv is the spacing of the strip f is the grade of steel now assuming 8 mm bars two leg vertical strips are used okay so asv is 2 into area of 8 mm bar so 2 into 50 so substituting back uh, asv as 2 into 50 and b is 250 and fy as 4 on 5 we get sv that is spacing of strips so which ends up in 361 mm now once we have found out this sv which is exceeding 300 we need to find out the maximum spacing of stirrups which is given in class 26.5.1.5 so which states that maximum spacing of stirrups is equal to 0.75 times the effective depth or 300 mm whichever is less so 0.75 times the effective depth is uh, equal to 0.75 into 402 which is 301.5 mm so the least is 300 mm so we get the maximum spacing of stirrups is 300 mm so we are going to adopt the least so we have 361 we have 301.5 and 300 mm so we'll be providing stirrups at a spacing of 300 mm so provide 8 mm two legged vertical stirrups at 300 mm center to center step 6 check for deflection here we are going to find out the actual span by d ratio and we are going to find out the allowable span by d ratio 
the allowable span by D ratio is greater than actual span by D ratio, we are safe. Else, we have to revise the section. So either increase the depth or increase depth as well as width. So let's check. Actual span by D ratio is uh, 5000 upon 402, which is 12.43. Allowable span by D ratio, which is uh, given in class 23.2.1. Uh, so allowable span by D ratio equal to 20 into modification factor. 20 is the number uh, which is given for simply supported beam. Okay. So modification factor is obtained from figure of figure four of IS 456. So for finding out uh, modification factor, we are in need of actual stress in steel. So FS, which is given us 0.58 FY into area of steel repaired upon area of steel provided. So area of steel repaired is 448 and we have provided steel is 628. So substituting those values, we get FS as 171.7 Newton per mm square. So with the help of uh, percentage of steel, which is 0.625 and FS 171.7 Newton per mm square from figure four, we get modification factor as 1.45. So substituting it back into the allowable span by D equation. So we get the allowable span by D equal to 20 into 1.45, which is 29. So the actual span by D ratio is 12.43 and allowable is 29. So we are safe. So the section is safe under deflection. Step seven, drawings. So We'll be drawing a longitudinal section and the cross section for our understanding. So the first one is the longitudinal section, the top one. So we have a clear span of 4770 mm and ball thickness 230 mm on either side. And overall depth of the beam is 450 mm. So at the bottom, we are providing two 20 dia bars throughout. So there's no curtailment since only two bars are being used. And same time at the top, we are providing two 16 mm bars throughout and there's no curtailment. And stirrups, uh, we are using two leg, eight mm at 300 mm center to center from the face of the support to the other face of the support. So that has been shown here. Now taking a cut section, AA. So let us see how it looks like. So the width of the beam is 250 mm and the overall depth is 450 mm. So at the bottom, we have two number of 20 dia bars. At the top, we have two numbers of 16 mm bars on the stirrup, which has been represented here as a loop. So it is two legged. So we have two vertical legs, two legged, eight mm at 300 mm center to center. So with this, the design of a singular reinforced section comes to an end. Thank you.